These are hand-rolled black tea rods from Sri Lanka. In this video, we're going to be tasting this tea and also taking the opportunity to explain the differences between green tea and black tea when it comes to the production and flavor. Let's get started. Okay, so what I have here today is wild tea rods, as they're called. Um, so this is actually a black tea that's kind of hand-woven into this little um, rod here. So this is a very interesting shape for a tea. Um, and I've brewed one of these before, so I think I have a kind of a good idea of how to, how to unpack this and uh, how to prepare it. Um, so this is coming from Sri Lanka, and, uh, or otherwise known as Ceylon. Um, and so, you know, Sri Lanka has a, a rich history of producing some excellent quality tea, so I'm really excited to try this one. Um, I'm going to leave some of this on. I mean, it's, it keeps it together, and it's not really going to affect the brewing of the tea. Um, so that's okay for now. I'm just going to put one of these in. The, the serving size is literally says one rod, one tea rod. So I'm just going to put that in the teapot here and then I'm going to prepare up this tea. So I'm going to be using next to boiling water uh, and a brewing time of three minutes. That's kind of been my, my lucky combo for the past few weeks. Okay, so right off the bat, the color looks a little bit different from other black teas we've seen in the past. Uh, it's much lighter. It's kind of more of this caramel brown color, um, which we'll touch on in a second. Um, but just to give you a quick background, this is a black tea. Normally we are doing green teas on this channel, so I'll just explain to you quickly the difference. So as you can see here, the leaves here are very dark. The reason for this is that they are fully oxidized. So once you pick a tea leaf, um, it will begin to oxidize over time and the enzyme oxidase is actually going to convert the catechins of the leaf into theoflavins and theorubigans. So this is why you lose a lot of, when you go from a green tea to a black tea, you're losing a lot of the, the green color. You're losing even the green flavor, you might say, because it's kind of these natural uh, vegetable flavors of the leaf that are present in green teas are kind of turning into more of this kind of caramel, chocolate, uh, brown sugar sort of flavor in the black tea. And so a black tea is a fully oxidized tea and a green tea is an unoxidized tea. So in order to stop the oxidation process, they're actually going to heat the leaves after the harvest. So this is going to deactivate the enzyme oxidase and prevent the oxidation process from happening. So the tea is going to be able to retain more of its natural green color. It's going to be able to retain its natural vegetable flavor. Um, and also, you know, the color of the liqueur is going to be different as well. Everything's going to be completely different about this tea. And some people like that. So the teas that we specialize in, which are Japanese green teas, they have this really vibrant green color, some of them. And this is from the steaming process. So the leaves are steamed after harvest, which actually enhances some of the green colors. Um, so very interesting, very different than the tea that's in front of us right now. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do a quick tasting of this and see what we notice. Hmm. Right away, very interesting flavor. Definitely similar to Ceylon teas, Indian teas I've had in the past. Um, I think what's notable about this is, that's why I mentioned the, the uh, caramel color earlier, is it kind of has this caramel, um, this caramel sweetness to it, which is really unique. And it's kind of got, it's very interesting. It's like, it's like the caramel, but also like a little bit of salt, like like salted caramel almost, um, but it's, it's almost, it's not quite like a sea salt kind of saltiness, it's more of like a soy sauce, it's a little bit more of a darker, uh, almost like fermented saltiness. Uh, very interesting tea. Let's go ahead and actually take a quick look at the leaves here. I'll actually put this aside for now, and we'll lay out the spent rod. Lay out the tea rod here. So you see it's starting to unfurl a little bit. It almost looks like a, like a broom or something, um, but it's not fully opened up yet. And what's interesting is this, how it's tied here. It's kind of keeping the leaves together. I think it's tied at the stem. Yeah, it's tied at the stems here, you can really notice. Um, so the stems are tied together and the leaves are kind of free floating almost in like a broom shape. And uh, I think this, is, this actually does have an effect on the tea because it's not opening up and releasing its flavor right away. It's like more of a controlled. Um, and this is actually, you know, pretty light and sweet as far as black teas go. So I'm wondering if that has anything to do with it. 
definitely lighter than, than teas I've had in the past. It does have that kind of muscatel, um, almost like spiciness that they would describe for uh, like an Assam uh, tea. So like, you know, further up in the subcontinent. Um, this is kind of characteristic of Indian teas, but I also notice it in this one as well. As I would say, mm, a lot going on here. Caramel sweetness, uh, soy sauce saltiness, and uh, muscatel kind of spiciness. Okay, so here we have the second brewing. The color is actually the same, more or less, which is actually unique, because usually you would think that it would get a little bit lighter. Um, but let's have a taste. That kind of soy sauce saltiness is still persisting, but the sweetness is going away. So it's becoming a little bit more one-sided, the tea. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that rod. Let's see what that rod's doing. Okay. The rod is really starting to open up here. Looks even more, not even like a broom anymore. It's like fully, fully opened up, more or less. You do still see some leaves are a little bit twisted into these strip shapes, kind of. Um, so definitely, definitely another infusion. This tea definitely still has some flavor to give. Let's put back in there. Yeah, it's definitely leaning more, leaning less into the sweetness, more into kind of the soy sauce and the muscatel. So it's salty, spicy, not salty, sweet, spicy. And when I say that it's salty, I'm not necessarily saying that it's like, it literally tastes like salt. I'm saying it's kind of activating the palate in the same way that salt would. Um, so it's like almost a little bit of this drying sensation on the, on the sides of the tongue, I would say. Um, it's definitely kind of, yeah, it definitely kind of enhances the flavor like salt would enhance a meal. Learning the world of black tea, so uh, feel free to leave a comment if you disagree with my tasting notes or something. I'm still trying to learn, um, but this is doing the best I can to uh, describe the flavor. Yeah, but definitely mostly leaning into that muscatel kind of spiciness, like seasoning spiciness, um, which maybe you would get with something like cinnamon or something. It's probably the most most well known example of that. It's like a it's spicy, but it's more of like an earthy kind of uh, seasoning spice. So that's definitely the most prevalent tasting note in the second brewing. The first brewing was more sweet, more caramel, a little bit of that muscatel, a little bit of that saltiness, but um, this is definitely picks up in the second brewing. So very interesting tea. I would say overall compared to other black teas, it's very light, very sweet. Um, I could definitely get another brewing out of this tea, but I don't want to make this video super long. But yeah, so thank you all so much for joining us on this tasting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely learned a lot. Hopefully you did as well. Uh, if you have any questions about black tea or tea in general, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. And until then, we'll see you next time.